Uh, my name is Jason Joel. I'm part of the product management team for the Google VMware as a service offering called Google VMware Engine. And I've been asked today to share with you what the current uh, early access program, the product actually looks like. And this is a live version of the production environment that I'm sharing with you right now. Um, I'm logged in as a, as a user, but this is the customer's interface, essentially what the customer would see after they log into the GCP interface and click on a link to take them to the Google VMware engine. So we are integrated into the Google's platform, as we mentioned. And once a customer decides that they want to create a private cloud that runs the VMware stack, they would come to this interface and here they can see their total number of private clouds, the number of nodes in that cloud, the total available compute cores and storage. And they have some of the common tasks that they're uh, likely to run right on the first main landing screen. Before I go into the tasks, I think I will uh, show you a little bit more about the private cloud itself. So private clouds, um, you can have a theoretically unlimited number of them. Uh, and they can be located all over the different Google data centers and resources around the world. And if you drill into it, we provide what customers will expect as the typical details, the ability to name it, uh, a subnet CIDR block available for the virtual center uh, deployment and the management appliances deployment, gives you a status and location and uh, some DNS related information uh, along with the vSphere version and the NSX edition. Now, this is uh, just kind of an overview summary, uh, kind of like a landing card that gives you an idea of what's there. But this is the interface from which you manage your private clouds from. So if you wanted to simply expand the private cloud and increase the number of nodes, you can run that operation right from here and add as many nodes as you'd like. As I said, we're in an early access, so I'm actually throttled to prevent me from adding nodes. Um, but Customers can add up to 16 nodes per uh, virtual private cloud and uh, have the ability to do that dynamically and it happens extremely fast. So we have uh, the benefits of scale on demand built into the product and solution right here. Uh, within this uh, interface, we also have the ability to configure and define the networking environments. So our firewall tables can be configured and set right within the Google VMware Engine UI. You can set up your VLANs and this, this right here, all the management VLANs and the user-defined VLANs are available and can be configured and edited. You can define public IP addresses. So if you want a public IP address in, in this demo, I put the virtual center on a public IP address, which is highly not recommended for production environments, but great for demos. And you can create other workload related uh, public IP addresses that get plumbed dynamically right through Google's cloud uh, fabric and uh, provide you with access to these uh, workloads directly on the internet. You can set up your own VPN connections, which is typically the way the customer would securely connect from their on-prem environment to uh, the NSX Edge. And as we've talked about previously, you can peer this directly to an existing VPC, a Google VPC that you own and control and previously and might have other workloads running in that you want to access from or access to the VMware environment. And so it's uh, actively peered in the environment that I've got here right now. Uh, another capability with the interface is to show you any activities that have occurred within this environment. So this uh, shows you any alerts that have occurred, any specific events that have come up, tasks that have been performed or are long running. And then you have an audit trail for security and compliance purposes. So you can see what has occurred throughout the interface. Now, this is a relatively simple cloud interface because fundamentally the goal is to provide customers with the experience that they are used to and that they are familiar with, which is the virtual center interface. So customers, once they've deployed, configured, and managed their private clouds, um, or they have a need to create a new one, you can simply do it by giving it a name, choosing a location, selecting the nodes and providing a CIDR block. Then you do what most customers will wanna do on a daily basis, which is launch into the virtual center client. 
And this is just to be clear, what we're looking at here is this instance of the virtual center client is operating on the cluster that's been deployed in the, in the private cloud that's been deployed on bare metal hardware in Google's data center. So it's dedicated hardware running a dedicated instance of ESX on each host, of vSAN, NSX, and virtual center. And then when the customer launches virtual center, you will see what you are all incredibly familiar with is the standard traditional virtual center interface. And this is the commercial product uh, from VMware. It's the same product customers run on-prem and they have many of the same, uh, not all the same capabilities and functions within here. And if you look at the cluster, you can see the actual hosts that are there and the resource pools we've created and customers can add their own workloads within the workload resource pool as they wish. Now, there are- sorry, so One of the questions, this reminds me, one of the questions we didn't ask or I might've missed it was upgrade frequency. Are you guys on the latest uh, version of vSphere, uh, latest publicly available version of vSphere, or is it similar to competitors that you guys kind of have a different uh, release cycle? Now, we are on the commercially available version of vSphere, and that is what we offer and support. And we have an aggressive timeframes with which to adopt any security updates right away, any update one, update two, update threes, and obviously vSphere 7 is around the corner and uh, we want to offer that as, as timely as possible. So our uh, strategy in the cloud is to provide people with the latest environments and provide them with the most secure environments. And uh, therefore we're running on that platform. Now we are uh, working with VMware to make enhancements in that to provide some advanced features in the future, but it will be shipped in VMware's uh, products. And, and we obviously have to have them make some enhancements to get that. So without going into a lot of details, because I wouldn't expect you guys to have a ton of detail, but can you talk very, very high level about the announcements of vSphere 7.0 and its integration with Kubernetes? Not, I don't, I don't need it in any high detail, just theoretically, how do you guys expect to implement uh, 7.0 and beyond? Yeah, I'm going to leave that to Manish, who's going to the next presenter, or Manoj, if you want to chime in with something here specifically around that. But uh... yeah, so uh, I think uh, just real quick uh, at a high level, uh, we are offering a native VMware experience, uh, and we would like to make sure that whatever value the native VMware platform possesses, customers are able to get that value, including uh, you know the container support and. Uh, any other, uh, you know, uh, tooling and, and add-on uh, value, uh, you know, platforms that VMware provides. Uh, we do have a strategy for container management uh, centers uh, centered on Anthos, and we would fully support and enable that strategy. And you will see sort of what we are thinking in that direction when Manish talks about uh, add-on ecosystem solutions and, and uh, cloud, cloud native integrations. There's a... Are any other questions before I go on? There's only one or two other things I thought I'd highlight. Just a quick one. I noticed there was that VMware resource pool. Uh, the vCenter instance is actually running inside the cluster. It's not an external component. That's correct. It's inside the cluster. Okay. So from a sizing perspective, I have to take that into account uh, from how much resources, how many resources I need to buy. Yes. And w with the vSAN on enabled with dedupe and compression on it, we don't end up uh, consuming you know, a significant percentage of the overall storage. And we also provision an enormously larger amount of storage and uh, memory and compute capability than any of the competitive solutions currently. So, uh, but you do have to take into account. And one of the things that works out really well on, on Google VMware Engine is your total cost of ownership, we think is significantly lower than the competitive solutions because of the uh, size of the hosts and the nodes. Then are yeah, you guys partnering of... with, I'm sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, go ahead, it's okay. And were you guys partnering with any external storage providers to uh, support storage heavy people who want their third party storage solutions replicated into the environment? Yes, we are, and that actually takes me nicely into the next section of uh, uh, of my demo, and then I'll let Minish specifically talk about the uh, partners we're working with. But I think you'll be uh, you'll understand my answer uh, when I cover this next feature. So, 
uh, on the summary screen of the private cloud, there is the ability to obviously delete it uh, and shrink it, which we highly recommend not doing because uh, without knowing what you're doing. But one of the unique features of our service is that you can escalate your VMware privileges and, and get a higher level of privilege than your typical user on the cloud would have. And the reason this feature exists is specifically to address your question, which is to enable customers to do things that they cannot do on most cloud environments, including installing and configuring third-party ecosystem provider solutions. So many of those solutions require admin access and accounts and service accounts with that level of access that uh, other cloud solutions don't provide you with necessarily. So in the Google VMware engine, you have the ability and we give you the capability and permission to go ahead and escalate the privileges you need, create the accounts you need to support other backup partners, storage partners, security partners, et cetera, that you might want to uh, uh, provide and integrate with with your VMware instance that's running in, the, in Google Cloud. So. so that I think summarizes the fundamental features that I wanted to highlight today. Some of the other areas that I did want to emphasize is that it is integrated into VMware's Cloud Console. Uh, we've spoken about the identity and access management integration that uh, exists to enable customers to sign on using their corporate identities or uh, in shortly their Google identities to, to this environment and into Virtual Center. And then billing is also a key uh, critical component that if I log into my Google Cloud Pantheon interface and actually look at my billing, all activity that's procured here, all the nodes that are added, removed, and uh, any network egress charges that are incurred will show up in a standard billing report that uh, uh, customers get today from Google. And that's also a major uh, advantage to working with the Google VMware engine on GCP. Possible to have our nodes be in different regions? Not within the same cluster. You have to actually uh, create a separate cluster uh, or a separate per private cloud in each region to deploy your nodes.